I'm here with cast, crew, and creators of, all of them creators of The Runner, uh, which is a, a high school set thriller uh, directed by Michelle Danner, who is, is with us. And we've got several people around and they'll, they'll come back in. So I'm gonna start by asking uh, to, I'm gonna throw it out to all, Brian, Michelle, and Jason, producer, screenwriter, director, not in that order. Let's talk about the genesis of this project. Um, Jason, I, I, I believe Michelle came to you with the germ of an idea, but but Brian, of course, I don't want to overlook the producer. So let's talk about how it all came together. Um, well, all right, I'll jump in first. So uh, Michelle had seen, uh, I think, a couple of pieces on the news and folks had forwarded her, forwarded her some other stories. Um, the runner, you know, it's a dark story and, and it can seem really far-fetched, but versions of this happen and are happening right now to young people around the country. Um, high school kids, college kids that are basically um, at the whim of various police departments and their quotas for drug arrests. Um, and, and folks are having their lives ruined. And so we really, uh, it was pretty personal to Michelle. It's something we really wanted to explore and find a pathway into. Um, this was a challenging one to write and um, bless Michelle, we've worked together before. We have a great shorthand, but I blew past every writing deadline she gave me on this. It was a really hard script to deliver um, primarily because uh, it was just such a, a painful world that we put this main character in and actually his entire circle of, of people around him that he loves. Uh, but for me personally, through the writing process, you know, you tap into, you know, memories, you tap into uh, emotions, whatever you can bring to it to make it real and authentic. And uh, the for, for the first half of the movie and the writing process, um, my wife was pregnant with our daughter. Um, but for me personally, I was really tapping into, you know, what it was like uh, as a high school kid, as a college kid, sort of being in worlds kind of like this, experimenting, maybe taking it too far sometimes, but it was sort of all in good fun. And I was really, you know, right there with Aiden um, and his journey. But right about when I delivered the midpoint of the movie, of the script, um, my wife gave birth, I had a daughter. And all of a sudden, it was almost like overnight, my perspective flipped. And all of a sudden I'm with Aiden's mom and just heartbroken uh, over what's happening with this kid. And I couldn't keep going. I couldn't keep putting him through these horrible things. I just felt so bad for this character I was creating. So it just took me forever to, to get there um, on this journey. But I was, I'm really excited with the end result um, and this incredible team we put together here. Brian, anything you'd like to, like to add from, from, from your side there? I mean, how involved were you from the beginning? Uh, well, truthfully, it, it really was Jason and Michelle's baby in terms of the uh, creation of the script. I mean, I, I read all the versions of it and put my two cents in, but uh, it, it really was, you know, minor adjustments to what they had already uh, created, so. And Michelle, let, let, let's uh, hear, hear from you. You and I have talked a few times about this, but uh, your impetus to do this, um, and uh, let's say up front, you know, as both as, as an acting coach, as a director, uh, and, and putting your your creative mind into into creating the stories, working to create the stories. Um, you know, we, we're talking about this without actually talking about what the movie really is about a young man being busted for drugs and then uh, and then being used by the police to get bigger fish. You know, I think that when I became a mom, you know, everything shifted in terms of the kinds of stories that I wanted to tell. And I think this being my fifth feature film, this is probably, you know, the story that I really, really wanted to tell. It did start with me being up too late at night Actually, it was two o'clock in the morning watching a news report that made me cry. And then I woke up the day after and started to write. I wrote this little treatment and I did send it to you, Brian, you probably forgot, but I sent it to Jason and <laughs> having collaborated with Jason uh, before um, and loved- I, 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 I mentioned I, I had I, I had read all the uh, incarnations yes, you right did, from the you beginning. Did. I'm just joking. And actually, to be perfectly honest, I mean, I said to Michelle, you, you, you don't really want to do this, do you? I yes, mean, you did say that why me. don't we do a romantic comedy? What are we doing? You know, and 
Yeah, so, he, he said that to me. There's my input. <laughs> every movie that I've wanted to make. But anyway, I've enjoyed it. Uh, you know, it, it really, I think it's important. I think that I really zeroed in this time on how much that desire is fueled inside of you to want to tell a story. Because it is hard to make a movie. But I'm lucky, you know, everybody that's part of this, you know, uh, Q&A today, I've collaborated with... Um, and, uh, you know, and I've collaborated with Jason before in a script that he wrote that was wonderful called Bad Impulse that just came out, you know, in December. And he had written a great script then and then wrote another great script for The Runner. And it was just, you know, wonderful, you know, ongoing collaboration and a real desire to want to tell this story about these kids. And I think that that's a recurring theme in me anyway, kids that fall through the cracks, kids that, you know, who's gonna rescue these kids. And when police enforcement forces them without the knowledge of their parents to go undercover and try and bring down a particular drug kingpin, I feel that when shit happens, they become real sacrificial lambs. And that really uh, drove me passionately to wanna to tell the story. Then to everyone else in on this, that uh, our parents, whether or not they've gone through the teenage years or not, how did this, no, I mean, I, we, I know Cameron, you have a young son. So many years from high school um, and, and everybody themselves are, are many years away from high school. So, you know, what, what is chord is struck in your hearts when you're going through this and, and filming this? Because Cameron, you're the police, you're the detective that's driving the, the bad stuff happening to, to the kid. Yeah, where's, uh, I mean, where's the where's new there? one? I got it. Thank you, man. <laughs> it, it was, uh, well, first of all, you know, the, the script came to me as a, as a total surprise. Uh, and I can, you know, either be not such a good thing or you can be a great surprise. And in this scenario, I, I read it and I, and I thought it was fantastic and, and loved the idea of uh, playing this detective. Um, so, yeah, it was it was it was fun how it kind of came together organically, and Michelle was amazing to work with. Um, just gave me so much freedom and confidence to kind of experiment and, and play, and, and and I think as I believe she does too. That's sort of how you 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 get some of your best stuff. Um, but it was a great experience from from top to bottom. I I know I'm like older and I have two kids, but I'm by far probably the most immature one on set, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, let me, let me turn it to those playing the high schoolers. You know, how uh, can you compare, when you saw this script, how did it resonate with your own experiences and what kind of differences did you, ha did you have? Well, um, <laughs> I um no I, I I didn't you know really grow up in in in, in the environment environment like Aiden um there were obviously a lot of stuff you know going through the process with Michelle and 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 and, and Jason to 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 a certain extent too because I met him a little bit before we started shooting in terms of understanding and 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 we have some people on set as well who for whatever reasons had you know from. Well, they knew they knew about some of these things and so they were trying to kind of show me the ways and show me okay what's happening here what what does that actually mean um but but yeah i didn't have such i mean i didn't come from that so there was definitely something i had to learn but what i will say um to bring it back to what, what cameron was saying was you know at, at the end of the day like so when michelle was kind of she was my teacher before she was my director and, and i remember one of the, the great things that and we always used to talk about was that even when you're in this scene, right, the devastating scene, you're crying or whatever, super sad and whatever, you're really smiling on the inside because you're really, it's really this, this, this like full circle on you get to do what you love. And, and I think the best, you know, everyone was fantastic and everyone was amazing. And I think this for just how everything came together was a miracle. But I think the best part of the whole movie was just definitely, you know, everyone loved what they were doing and everyone was an artist and everyone got to kind of have their voice be heard everyone got to share. And I think that's the reason why we came out with what we came out with. And, uh, and everyone was amazing, you know? The DP was, I mean, he was okay, you know? No one really- Yeah, he, he was terrible and very it's, angry. And... Yeah, yeah, but apart from that- I yeah, just I wanna say that uh, what really um, 
What I loved was that both Cameron, uh, who really brought his heart to this, to this part, and uh, and Edouard, your vision, when they both came together and we started to rehearse these scenes, um, you know, there was such a sense of just being open and trying things and, and trying different choices. Right. And then I think that when it came time to, you know, just go on location and shoot these scenes, that there was just such an openness from both of them and a willingness to play. And that's Some, what Sometimes we too open, you know, Cameron like playing, sometimes just too open, you know, we, <laughs> so what we tried to, the, the, the thing was, we felt like it was appropriate to have a romantic scene somewhere, we just didn't know where. And so during rehearsal, we, you know, but again, yeah. Open, yeah, too open sometimes. There's no such thing as too open, Edward. We talked you know, about this already. You know, we, I, and, and that's that's why you were my guiding hand. You were my helping hand, you know, and, and you know, you gave me, you know. And I do it again. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I noticed, uh, so I don't want to interrupt, but I, I was just going to say that from, from my perspective was, it was what Michelle was saying was so was so true in the sense that there was a lot of collaboration on set during, even just to talk about the scenes or the blocking. And, and you're right, Michelle, it always felt like we were a team all together with all the departments trying to figure out what was best for the audience and, and the blocking, but it was very collaborative. I, I agree, I, I uh, forgot to mention this last time, but it was, it was very, uh, it was very beautiful to see because as Edward said too, people were there and they were trying to give the best because they loved what they were doing and, and, the, and the, the project. So very true, very true. Well, well I've got you, you on the center stage here um, as, as cinematographer and, I, and I'll throw this out to Holly as well. You know, it, there's the collaboration among actors, but also, you know, a lot of tone and, and, and the, the, the sensibility of the film is set by these pe by people like yourselves who aren't necessarily always the focus, obviously, because you're behind the camera or yeah. working in a studio. So what was going through your mind and, and what kind of collaboration for, for both of you was happening? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be very brief. Pretty much is, um, I, you know, when I met with Michelle after I read the script, I went to her house and we talked about the story. We talked about the feelings and what the movie is about. And then I, I put together some visual images and I said, this is what I, how I see the movie. And we talk more and we figure out a balance between, you know, the, uh, the uh, you know, the, a balance between finding something that was right for the story, but also very cinematic. She wanted this movie to, to have, uh, you know, a very, you know, artsy feeling. And I was like, you, you called the right person because that's, all, that's pretty much all I like to do. Uh, and so we we created this 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 plate of this template of of uh, imagery, and we kind of use that as a you know as a idea for the movie. And then a lot of things came, were decided in pre, in pre production, like uh, the visual ideas. But then, of course, when you're on set and you notice something that an actor does or a location is giving you um, something uh, that you didn't plan before. So then you, you know, you talk to, you know, like the director, Michelle, and you're like, hey, how about we do this in a silhouette? How about, you know, we, you know, we, we do it this way? And, and, you know, everybody's gonna say this about Michelle, but it's so true. She loves to collaborate. So if you're on set with her, it's because she cares for your opinion. So I right. never had a moment where I, I felt like I couldn't express an idea because I know she was always listening. And then sometimes she would say no, sometimes she would say yes, sometimes we discuss about it. So it was very, it was, it was very, you know, it was definitely a pleasure. And I had so much fun and I think is definitely some of my best work. I, I don't talk about myself that much, so that's why I'm gonna end. But I'm gonna say something, let me say, because he doesn't talk about himself well. And I always vouch for you too much anyway. I know, I, you're I, the I, opposite. First off, but no, in all, seriousness, in all seriousness, I would encourage the audience to really play close, pay close attention to the lighting because it is beautiful. Oh, yeah. you, you did a, a really beautiful job, my man. Thank you, Cameron. It, it was, was fantastic. And, and I, as I said this before, but I have to repeat it, it was like, it, you know, I will show up to set earlier because a lot of people were there earlier too. And I felt that I was so excited to be on set and, you know, 
we had a tight schedule too, so everybody had to be on their, you know, A game. But um, it's just so nice when you see a group, you know, and I'm talking mainly about the actors because those are the people that are like, you know, in a way giving us those emotion. But there was, of course, a group, a massive group of people behind that were, you know, super talented. But I was just very inspired by the, you know, the writing uh, and the, the actors, you know, working on scenes. So it was kind of it, you know. Right, Michelle? <laughs> well, you know, Gigi, you're a wonderful visual poet. And I've said this to you before. And, you know, the last time that I was shooting, uh, well, no, actually, I had a director of photography that I had collaborated with before. And, and but um, I don't know if it's because you speak Italian and my mother is Italian, uh, but I immediately, you know, felt that I just could trust this baby to you. And you did a wonderful job with it. And also because you just cared so much in every I, single yeah. aspect of it, all throughout the post-production, you just cared and, uh, and you brought me your, your beautiful artistry. And I'm certainly very grateful. And I think one of the things that's beautiful about this movie is- And I, I just wanna say a little funny story, like super fast. They pretty much were looking at, so we had to take a Christmas break for the movie. And so we just started the second half in mid January or February, I don't remember. And so we went to scout location the second half and we're looking for streets and whatnot. And I live in Los Feliz and we're looking at streets somewhere in the valley <laughs> and I thought, yeah, it would be so much nice to walk to the set. So Michelle, you know, there are beautiful streets in Los Feliz. <laughs> So I went, I took videos, she was like, oh, I love that, where is that? Oh, it's pretty close to my house, it's here. And so we shot that for three days, so I would just walk into set. <laughs> I, I thought I recognized the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, um, and they, they didn't like us there, but it was, it was fun. Well, Holly, how about you, you know, connecting into this uh, as composer of, of the film score, uh, working with this, you know, what, what, what's the process in connecting to the tone and, and working with Michelle? Uh, well, I have to echo what everyone else has said, that the, that the movie was just so beautiful and wonderful and such a great team, you know, that I poured my heart and soul into it, too, because um, I wanted to match what everyone else had done. You know, I felt like I had to live up to the film uh, when I first saw it. You completely it, I, did. Oh, yeah, well, you, thank you. <laughs> you were brilliant. You did brilliant. Brilliant. Well, I had to match all of you. So mm -hmm. just everything about it, the acting, the cinematography, the story, you know, it was all amazing the directing of course and I had worked with Michelle before you know and when she sent me the cut I was just like wow this is just beautiful it's emotional you know um so we had you know so a lot of discussions on the music and what we liked and what would work like instrumental wise and whatnot and yeah I just wanted to really you know enhance the emotion that was there you know um it was already so beautiful with the writing and the acting and um, but, it, you know, it was j just that fine line between the dark and the light of what was going on in the story, you know, um, there's tragic, but, but we're also hoping the whole time. So that's, that's where we went. <laughs> Beautiful work. Beautiful so work. Great when, thank you. Yeah, you have the opportunity to just work with somebody that, you know, you love to work with. And then Holly is one of those people. And I think that you really hooked in so much into what the movie was about that towards you know the second part of it when you scored scenes and you were wanting feedback and I mean there was no feedback because it was just perfect I mean I think you were, <laughs> you were waiting to get and there was none because you just had really you hit it you hit it oh well thank you it was a beautiful movie yep <laughs> Terry, Jessica, and Mike, I want to bring, bring you in, in to talk about that. I, you know, I asked a little bit ago about high school, about your experience as high school students. Well, of course, Edward did not go to high school in the United States, but you did, and hopefully somewhat different than your characters and your, your experience, but uh, how real did this get for you? Well, it got real to a certain extent with the partying. Um... It was different for me because I'm usually I'm used to playing uh, the girl next door, um, and Liz was definitely from the other side of the track, and so that was fun to explore. And also the juxtaposition of Liz, you know, growing up with zero privilege, and then Aiden growing up with privilege, but she's going to university and getting scholarships, and he's headed down a very different path. So I think that also in the in the writing reflects 
you can make life what you want and um, it just depends on where you want to end up, not necessarily circumstances. Michael, uh, I, I think you've mentioned that in a previous film, uh, Michelle Castro is a nerd. Uh, this, you are a very different, different role. You want to talk about that? Uh, yeah, so, you know, much like uh, Edward, uh, Michelle was first a teacher to me and then a director. So I was in her last film, Bad Impulse, and I sort of played, uh, yeah, exactly that, a nerd. Sort of not, not so much a nerd, just like a very like shy, like into video games, not very social. And uh, this character- um, He was I, the nerd, Darren. He was definitely a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> I'll admit it. All right, all right. Um, and, you, and it was great. You did a great job. I mean, yeah, thank you're you. not a nerd, but you really found that character. It was great. Yeah. No, that was fun. That was something I've never done before. And, um, you know, I could relate a little bit to this character in The Runner because um, the character I played was like sort of, sort of like the, the, the jock, the athlete of the school. And I played sports in high school. I never played football. My character was a football player. But, you know, when I was home in Michigan um, last year, I went up to the high school and just sort of saw like in between practices, like how these kids like carried themselves, how they talked, how they acted, how they walked, just different things like that. And there's definitely some similarities when I was in high school, but like, like, the new generation is like always changing and always there's always new things in and out and how you dress and you know what's cool and if it's two shoulders with the backpack or just one or so <laughs> it's really cool to sort of find that uh to find that character and um yeah it, it was really it was really uh, a really fun experience and then carrie you have a difficult arc through this it's almost like three different personalities that you're playing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, in a way. Um, how I kind of like found inspiration for was I went online school for my high school experience. So Layla was pretty close to kind of who I was in a way of having these dreams and these like aspirations that she really wanted, but she also led with her heart. And I tend to do that a lot. And I wanted to really show how like first love is kind of you give your whole soul to it and whatever they're doing, you want to do it for them in a way. And so that's kind of what I felt for that is I um, just wanted Layla and Aiden to have this soul moment. And then when it ended up switching, it was kind of this point where I was like really terrified of what to do because I didn't really know what to do. And then I thought, okay, you just have to make her a little bit younger. Like everything is opening to her eyes and yeah all right well it worked so uh thank you all for taking the time to, to talk about this film and wishing it the best of luck as it goes through the festival circuit and and into uh hopefully wide release so thank you, thank you. i just want to say one thing you know when you have the chance to work with such a great group of people and 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 young talent you know and jessica i've watched her grow you know and uh and darren um, and, and so happy to have met Karen and knew exactly that she was, you know, the right actress to play Layla. That, um, and also, you know, my, my partner in crime, Brian, who's my rock, who we worked on it, so many things. And, you know, it's almost like you want to just find a script and another project so you can ask everybody else to come back on and let's do something else together. When you find a great group of people to do art with, you just don't want to stop. So I just want so you're to working on the next one now, right? Yeah, I just want to say that I hope we all get to, you know, work together again soon. And thank you. It is a romantic comedy, thank God. <laughs> yes, it's it a romantic comedy. <laughs> it is a romantic comedy. You probably have to find it. Your friend is happy. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Enjoy the movie. <laughs>